Today we're going to continue with our lessons on factoring. Now we're going to flash back briefly to our last unit about quadratic functions and parabolas. Remember we learned two ways how to write a quadratic equation. One was the vertex form and we used our h and our k value in order to figure out the actual vertex. We know it's h and k. Another way to write a quadratic function is in our x-intercept form and we use our, our r and our s to get our x-intercepts. So they are r0 is our coordinate point and s0 is our second coordinate point for the x-intercepts. A third way to write it is called standard form. And standard form looks like this. y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now we've already seen a before. It's in the vertex form and in the x-intercept form. That's still our stretch or compression factor. Um, but everything else, the b's and the c, we haven't used those letters before, so they mean something different. But the big thing is, if you'll notice, this is a trinomial. So we have three terms in our expression, and that is what makes it a trinomial, and why we care about this for our algebra unit. Now, we need to be able to factor this trinomial in order to get different kinds of information about our parabola, and that's why we're doing this. So this is what we're going to be working on, factoring a trinomial. A simple trinomial is considered something where our a value is 1. So really you wouldn't see a number there, you're just going to have that invisible 1, and then we're factoring this right here. So the first thing you want to do when you're factoring simple trinomials is just check that a is 1, or see if you can common factor something out. So we already talked about common factoring, always check that you can do that first. If you can, do it, and then do this next process. We also talked about how factoring and expanding are opposites. So if we take these two binomials, or so multiplying binomials, we use FOIL, we eventually get down to this expression. But if we are factoring, so we factor, we basically go the other way. So we start with our trinomial, and we get down to two binomials that multiply together. So we've already learned how to do this. This is FOIL. And now we're going to be looking at our factoring. So how do we get from this trinomial down to two binomials that are multiplied? What we need to do is we need to look for two numbers that multiply to C and add to B. Okay, so obviously we have our C at the end. That's our constant term, there's no variable with it. And B is this one. So really it's going to be a matter of looking at what number is going to multiply to the number at the end and add to the number in the middle. And that's pretty much it. Um, a quick hint for you is if you look at C, and C is positive, you're going to find two numbers that are both going to be positive or they're both going to be negative. If C is, po is negative, then you're going to have one positive number and one negative number. So we'll see how that works in a minute. So let's do example one. We see our B and our C. And we want to find two numbers that multiply to C, that are going to multiply to give us 21, and those same two numbers add to give us 10. So really, we can go through and just list the factors of 21. So, well, 1 times 21 is going to give us 21. 2 doesn't divide evenly into whole number. 2, sorry, 3 and 7 multiply together to give us 21. Okay? There aren't any other factors. So we need to find the set that adds to 10. Well, that adds to 22, so that's no good. But 3 and 7 do add to 10. So the 3 plus 7 is 10, 3 times 7 is 21. This is our set of numbers that we want. So our next line, we write these numbers in the brackets as part of your factors. So we know that we're going to have two factors, that two binomials that add together. Our variable is x, and then we have 3 and 7. So positive 3 and positive 7 there are our two binomials that multiply together to give us this trinomial. Let's try another one. 
we have x squared minus 1x minus 12. So we need two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 1. So we always, always, always want to start with the multiplication. So find c first. So two numbers that multiply to negative 12. Well, we can just start listing them out, but just like we did up here, but that's going to take a long time for some of these. You can, in your head, think about, okay, what's going to work? So well, we've got 1 and 12. But that gives us positive 12, so we need to make it negative. So we can either have negative 1 and 12, or positive 1 and negative 12. Those are two separate sets of uh, factors of negative 12. We've got negative 2 and 6, or positive 2 and negative 6. And then we have 3 and 4. So negative 3, positive 4, positive 3, negative 4. Each of these sets of numbers multiplies to give us negative 12. But the question is, what adds to negative 1? Well, obviously, these are not going to do it. So is it negative 3 plus 4 or positive 3 minus 4? Well, we're trying to get to negative 1. So these are the set of numbers that get to add to negative 1. So we have x minus 3, pardon me, plus 3, and x minus 4. Okay. Let's try the next one. So our c is negative 36, so let's just think about it. Um, we have 1 and 36, so negative 1 and positive 36, or positive 1 and negative 36. That's never going to add up to be negative 5. So let's jump down. We know that 4 and 9 are going to work, so the options are negative 4 and positive 9, or positive 4 and negative 9, which set adds to negative 5. Well, 4 minus 9 is negative 5. So that's our set. Our variable is t, t plus 4 times t minus 9. And there are our two factors that multiply to give us that trinomial. Right, remember how I said we need to always look for common factoring first? We see that our a value is not 1, so we need to check that we can common factor this out. So 2 22 and 56 can all be divided by 2. So the way we do this, just like we did in our common factoring lesson, we're going to basically divide all of these terms by 2. 2x divided by 2 leaves us with x squared. 22x divided by 2 gives us 11x. And 56 divided by 2 is 28. So that's our new, it's been common factored, but we haven't factored the trinomial yet. The big thing now is to remember that this is our new b and this is our new c. So what two numbers multiply to give us 28 and add to give us 11? Well, if we think through the multiples of 28, we know 4 and 7 are going to be the things that multiply to 28 and they add to 11. That's just something you're going to have to practice in your mind. Okay, what things multiply together? 1 and 28, 2 and 14, 4 and 7. So eventually you're going to find the ones that add. We're going to have x squared, x, we decided that the factors were 4 times 7 is 28, 4 plus 7 is 11. Okay, so in this case we actually have three factors, 2, x plus 4, and x plus 7. All of these multiply together to give us this trinomial. Okay, and the last one's a little bit, it kind of looks strange because we have two variables happening. But we're going to use the exact same process that we had before. We want to find two numbers that multiply to give us 6y squared. And then they add to give us 5y. So at the end of the day, we're still going to have our expression that has x times x. But we don't know what these other two numbers are. So if we have a squared, we know that both of our two things that multiply together have to have a y. So it's going to be y something y times something y. Well, what are the factors of 6? Well, 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Well, 2 and 3 add to give us 5. So we've got 2y times 3y. Okay, so again, two things that multiply together to give us c and add together to give us b. Now, if we're not sure about this, we can always do a check. 
and check just means using foil to get back to our trinomial. So let's try it. Okay, so first x times x is x squared, outsides x times 3x, sorry, x times 3y, 3xy, insides 2y times x, so 2xy, and lasts 2y times 3y is 6y squared. We want to combine like terms, those have the same variable so we can add them together. We're left with x squared 3xy plus 2xy is 5xy and 6y squared. So did we get back to our original trinomial x squared plus 5xy plus 6y? Yes we did. So we know that these two are factors of this trinomial. All right. There are three questions that we'd like you to have done before you come to class, so please have those written down in your notebook. Um, and give them a try. Follow the process. Two numbers that multiply to C and add to B. Great. Have a nice day.